Hi there, welcome to another video illustration from the team here at the Organ Clinic. Today we'll be seeing a laparoscopic right hepatectomy for hepatocellular carcinoma. The patient is a 70 year old with a history of hepatitis C who was found to have a liver mass on screening ultrasound. Multiphase CT scan found a LIRADS5 lesion in segment 8 close to the right portal bifurcation. Axial CT shows the mass abutting the right hepatic vein in close proximity to the V8 branch of the middle hepatic vein. On coronal images, we can see how close the mass is to the right portal bifurcation. Therefore, we recommended a right hepatectomy. With a calculated future liver remnant less than 40%, the patient underwent portal vein embolization with a good response, a kinetic growth rate greater than 2%, and a future liver remnant almost 60%. The patient was positioned in a modified French position with split legs. We used five subcostal working ports and extracted through a fan and steel incision. An additional port was placed inferiorly to help with some better angles on the cava. We see some demarcation between the right and left lobes after the portal vein embolization. The mass is identified on ultrasound and no additional masses are seen. We start with liver mobilization. First, the round and falciform ligaments are divided up to the level of the hepatic vein origin. Then the left coronary ligament is divided, as seen here. And then the right coronary ligament is divided to expose the lateral aspect of the right hepatic vein. All tissues lateral to the hepatic vein are then divided as much as possible from these cranial working ports. The groove between the right and middle veins was then developed from this cranial aspect. Now turning our attention more caudally, we like to help with right liver mobilization by encircling the round ligament with an endo loop and retracting it extracorporeally to the patient's left. We start by identifying the infrahepatic IVC and dividing all the retroperitoneal attachments as well as continuing this out more laterally. The smaller short hepatic veins can be ligated safely with the ligature energy devices seen here. For the larger short hepatic veins, we prefer to ligate between ties and hemolock clips. As the dissection continues cranially, the cable ligament is then isolated and divided with an endo-GIA stapler. At this point, we have a great view of the right hepatic vein insertion on the inferior vena cava with the groove between the right and middle veins identified. A nasogastric tube is passed between the groove to help with preventing any inadvertent injury to the right vein during the parenchymal dissection and to help with any sort of possible hanging maneuver. A cholecystectomy is then performed. Prior to dividing our cystic duct stump, we leave a longer tie so that way we can later medially retract this to help with exposure during our portal dissection. The gallbladder is then placed in an endo catch bag and removed. We start the hyalur dissection with this medial retraction on the cystic duct stump. We can then identify and remove the 12B and 12P lymph nodes to be able to expose the main portal vein. With the cystic duct retracted medially, we then work to expose and isolate the right hepatic artery as it courses posteriorly to the common bile duct. With the right hepatic artery now isolated, we can retract this medially to identify the right portal vein and the caudate branch, or G1C. Typically, this caudate branch is ligated in a right hepatectomy. However, in this case, with a large caudate lobe in a cirrhotic patient, we opted to preserve this vein. We isolated our main right portal vein distally to this branch. Thankfully, the portal vein embolization was further intraparenchymal from here, allowing us a good distance on our right portal vein to allow for extra hepatic control. Inflow vessels to the right lobe are then clamped and 2.5 milligrams of ICG are administered in a negative staining method. Here we see great uptake in the left lobe as well as the caudate lobe with no uptake in the right lobe. As well, good Doppler signals were confirmed in the future liver remnant with ultrasound. The right hepatic artery is first ligated and divided between medium hemolock clips. Using the vessel loop as a sling, we're then able to ligate the right portal vein using large hemolock clips. We found that these hemolock clips are pretty great, and especially for ligation of the portal vein in small confined spaces. 
Often, if there's available space, we try and use an endo GI stapler, though in this case, the clips worked out quite well. Prior to starting parenchymal transection, we set up for a Pringle. We have often find that this is not needed, though it is very nice to have in cases of emergency or bleeding. We mark our umbilical tape at the halfway point to help with placement and pull this extracorporeally out through the future site of extraction of the fan and steel incision. Here, Maryland is placed through a 24 French chest tube. The transection plane is then marked with electrocautery and the V8 branch is marked on the liver surface capsule to help with later identification. The first centimeter or so of the liver parenchyma can easily be divided with a ligature or harmonic. We then divide the deeper structures with a CUSA. This CUSA clarity is a great device for laparoscopic dissection as it can act as a dissector as well a full-time suction device and as it can cauterize at the tip. Smaller veins are divided with ligature with larger veins here like this V5 branch are isolated and then divided between hemolock clips. We continue opening the book of this dissection in a caudal to cranial approach and encounter now the V8 branch. This again is isolated and divided between hemolock clips. Here we can see how nice it is to have that NG tube act as almost a backstop to prevent against any sort of injury to the right hepatic vein. There's little parenchyma remaining. Here we are identifying the cranial aspect of the hilar plate. The caudate process overlying the inferior vena cava is then divided so that way we can get access to the hilar plate for division here with an endo GIA stapler. We air the stapler towards the specimen side with an assistant providing counter tension on the future liver remnant to prevent against any sort of stricture on the left hepatic duct. Only a small amount of parenchyma and glistens capsule is what remains. With the vision of this, we now expose the right hepatic vein, which can then be divided with an endo GIA stapler. The specimen is then placed in an endo catch bag and extracted through a fan and steel incision. There was no Pringle required and blood loss was less than 200 cc's. The falciform ligament was then reapproximated with a V-lock suture to prevent against any torsion on the outflow vessels. The cut surface was then inspected for bile leaks and there were none. Flow seal was then applied to the raw cut surface area. No drain was placed. The patient had a relatively smooth postoperative course with great liver function. He was discharged on postoperative day six on minimal oral narcotics. Final pathology returned with a 3.1 centimeter HCC with negative margins. Thanks for tuning in for another minimally invasive hepatectomy performed here at the Oregon Clinic. 